Ramona Jerome Ever After Mustang Rescue with Horsetails. And I want to welcome again Sharon Sewell. She was with us in a previous time and, and we talked about Reiki and animal communication. Sharon, I want to welcome you back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming back <laughs> again. But I thought we touched on those subjects, but we never really got very deep into them. And I, I would like, can we start with, can you separate Reiki and communication and, and tell us if there is a difference between the two? Um, well, you can. To, to me, Reiki is like a form of communication. It's sort of like a, a spiritual communication rather than, um, you know, just going in and asking questions. You just, it's something you feel inside. And when you do Reiki, you become very, first of all, you ground with the earth and then you draw in the universal energy and you become one with everything. I mean, it's, there's like no separation. And so you can get messages from like the universe or the, the animals, um, or you may not get anything. You just might just feel bliss because you're blending your energies. Um, it's, it's, you know, animal communication is not Reiki. That's something separate. Okay, now explaining the two of those a little better for me. How do you become qualified to do Reiki as you do on our horses? Okay, Reiki is um, it's a, a healing modality um, that can heal you physically, emotionally, spiritually. It does all levels. Um, and you, you find a master and you become what they call attuned to the energy. And they put certain symbols into your chakras, usually your crown chakra and at the back of your neck and places. And these um, symbols attune you to this Reiki energy. And you can channel it from source. And it's unlimited. It ne you know, there's no end to it. Um, and you channel it <clears throat> through yourself and out and into whatever you're healing or sending it to. You're not using your own energy. Like, um, I think like healing touch and, and some of those modalities, you're actually using your own energy. And so you can get tired, you know, and deplete yourself when you do it. When you're using Reiki, you're, you're calling on source energy, so it's unlimited. And can anybody do this? Mm -hmm. in? Yeah, any you know, just find a teacher, get an attunement, and um, start practicing the Reiki. Um, people can also do, you know, energy healing without being attuned to it. Um, for instance, like um, you know, when when you like cut your finger, you might take your hand, if you're not attuned to Reiki, you might take your hand and hold it. Or if you have a stomach ache, you might see little kids holding their hands over their stomachs. That's a form of healing. You're using your own energy to heal it. It's something that I think, you know, everybody has. And you can use it to a certain extent. Yeah, and that, they just put their hands over the stomach for a stomach mm -hmm. ache. You just do that without even thinking about right. what you're doing. It comes so naturally. Yeah. Yeah. So... Sharon, when you came to us the um, very first time, and I'll never forget that, you came in with the fear of horses, and I think we talked about that previously. But maybe just in a nutshell, if someone didn't see it, we'll just go back on that. You came in because you wanted to do Reiki on horses, mm -hmm. but were afraid of them. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Sure. Just, yeah. Um, I had people asking me when they learned I did Reiki and they were starting to hear about it, oh, can you do my horse? You know, it, it kicks out or it does this. And I'm thinking, you know, to me, horses were on earth to somehow try to kill me. I had bad experiences with ponies when I was younger. Loved horses. They just didn't seem to care for me. You know, I was one of those little kids that used to collect all the plastic horses and pretend I was a horse and I'd go and stare at horses down the street. But I had this big shadow of fear hanging over me. And so I saw your ad for Woman and Horses and thought, okay, I'm going to, you know, go to this. I'm going to 
get over this fear. And I walked in, my knees were, were knocking. I was so afraid and I kept thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this class because I'm not going to be able to stand up here. I was so scared. I remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, I did. I got braver and braver. And um, it and just... At that time, I had no idea that you were a Reiki master. I had no idea that you had this mm -hmm. ability. But you worked with a rather, well, we started you with a pretty gentle horse. Mm -hmm. And just to recap it a little bit, and then we brought you up and we gave you a horse that was a little more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and you did very, very well. And it became apparent that you had something special and you were able to do more with the horses than what we were actually doing in that class. Mm -hmm. so I think that's when we introduced you to Cheyenne. Do mm -hmm. we want to go that point right now? To, sure. All right. I think they're going to bring up a picture of Cheyenne so that you can see mm -hmm. um, this beautiful bay horse. And to give you a background, we've done a little documentary on it, and we, uh, we've shown it here. So some of you may remember that, but every day there was more and more progress with this horse. She came to us, we couldn't touch her, we couldn't get near her, we could not get a halter on her. And, and it's wonderful if they could live wild like they did out in the Western Ranges, but they can't. We need to have blacksmiths come in to trim their feet, vets come in to um, give them treatment, we need to worm them. We need to be able to check them, put fly spray on them because all of these natural elements out in the West, they wear down their hoofs by the rocky terrain that they travel on and the many miles they travel. So we cannot let a horse just remain wild and um, we have to be able to handle them. So we needed desperately to do something with Cheyenne. We had to bring her around. And this